your working environment is one of the most important tools that you have. It's important for any Agile team to be able to communicate well um, and that team to decide how they can do that. So at the beginning of any project, it's very important for, the, for them to get together and talk about the tools that they will need and how they want to structure that space. It's very important that they sit together, that they have ways to communicate, potentially uh, taking down dividers so people can talk together, uh, putting up spaces where they can gather around maybe whiteboards or project walls uh, and discuss things, have impromptu conversations where they can sort out problems um, and talk through ideas. Having things on the walls helps the teams, everybody see what's going on at any time. It also helps communicate between other teams as well. Um, there's no escaping, there's escaping a document that's on a computer, but there's no escaping a, a big wall that tells you exactly where things are at any one time. The role is effectively looking after a software development team alongside content editors and other type of people who are involved. We will generally start the team off with a stand up in the morning. A stand up is getting all the team members to huddle together, um, talk briefly about what they've done the day before. Um, what they're up to that day and if they've got any blockers or any issues that they need me as a, as a delivery manager to try and resolve for them. The idea is partly so that everyone knows uh, what everyone else is up to, um, but obviously it's probably most beneficial for... Content designer is a bit of a posh way of saying web editor, um, but it, the implication in calling it calling them content designers is that it's, it's a bit of a broader remit to the standard web editor. You're not thinking in terms of what do we want to tell people, we're thinking in terms of what, what do people want to know. Writing something simply and logically and, and structuring it in a way that, in a way the user doesn't even have to read it properly, it just goes in because it's so intuitive, that, that's, the, the, that's the ideal. In order to be able to write something simply, you've got to really understand it and you've got to understand what's relevant and what can you leave out. How do you take the user on a journey to get to being able to take an action based on this information? Um, because most users, the, the, like I said before, they're not just browsing. They don't just want to educate themselves. They want to be able to do something. A lot of it is relationships with people. Um, and so, so being able to stay in a positive relationship with all kinds of different people when there are all kinds of pressures um, that, that can encourage polarization mm -hmm. and not getting into that space, that's a good quality to have. An ability to work with fluidity and unknown quantities and to be able to jump when you need to jump. You know, sometimes we get very um, short amounts of time to make changes that have got national consequence. Um, so to, to be able to kind of be in that space and not fall to pieces um, is handy. Somebody once wrote a long letter to their friend and at the end of it they said, um, I'm sorry I wrote such a long letter, I didn't have time to write a short one. And that's kind of what I like about this job. It's like you, you have to take the time to, to sculpt language to uh, make it as precise as possible um, in a way that doesn't hide behind complexity uh, so and that kind of I enjoy that. If you think of the product as being like a, a theatre production um, with all the development teams working on their own pieces of set in a scenic workshop then web operations if you like we're the people that manage the theatre building itself. We provide the stage, we manage the theatre building, we provide the bars off which you hang your lights and the electricity and it's our job to make sure that all of the pieces of the puzzle fit when they go and the curtain goes up. It's aiming to bring together the best skills of systems administrators with the best skills of developers so that we can solve different classes of problems in better ways. Historically, um, and this is probably generalizing a bit, but historically there have been systems administrators who manage servers and developers who write software and when the software is written it gets thrown over the wall. To go back to the theater analogy, if, you're, uh, if the people building your set don't know much about the theatre and the people who manage the theatre don't talk to them about what they're building, it would be very easy for them to build a piece of set that just didn't fit in the building. And so you build a better product by getting these people to talk to one another at an early stage and to address the problems that they have with getting their software into production together. I think you need two things most of all. You need uh, the ability to solve problems, problems perhaps that you haven't seen before, 
Um, and that's often aided by having quite a, a scientific mind. There's no, with, with large complex systems, there's, there's no point trying to analyze what's going on unless you're actually measuring things. So the ability to do some monitoring, have some numbers that tell you what's going on, um, and use those to, to fix a problem with your system or to improve the performance of your system.